I had to take a break because, uh, you know, some health reasons, but I am back and, oh god, this is the chapter I had to miss? Uh, nobody's talking about it anymore. Huh. Oh well, who cares? Let's talk about some sexual assault. So this week's chapter is called Super Spooch, which... Ah! Boo, you stink! Uh, all right. Uh, all right, I, I, I'll get to the ball crushing scene in a moment. Just let me cook. Anyways, I found the title of this chapter quite funny because if you think about what happens in this chapter, you know, Yoru and Chainsaw Man kissing really would be one big super smooch. Is it worth it? Probably not, uh, as we'll get into, but super indeed. So Yoru really just feeling herself something fierce decides to use rusty metal wiring as her main utensil. She turns it into a knife and I can't lie, I chuckled at the I found a knife on the ground line because no, she didn't. She is clearly a liar there. I believe she said this mostly because of Yoru's massive ego. She feels like she knows everything, can solve every problem, and can fight anything that moves and beat it. And if she loses, she'll just say, oh, uh, finally a good match. Hm. Where's the ass? There is the ass. But she says, and this is real, right? Not AI generated. <laughs> Losing your dick should straighten you out, right? Take it out. Uh, it's really funny, and in a way, this could be taken as one big euphemism in other contexts for what Digi was proposing in the first place, you know, using ejaculation to clear his head. Like, she's literally proposing what is essentially the same concept, but more brutal and kind of overboard. Also, you'd think a great warrior like Yoru would know a about the advantages of having sex with someone on the battlefield, right? Like, I don't know, man. I think Yoru at this point makes Asa look like she, she, she I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So Denji gives her the look of the century, head slightly shrugged, jaw dropped, eyebrows crooked. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely cannot believe she's serious right now. And oh, is she serious? Dead serious, in fact. She literally wants to cut his dick off to free him from his sex drive. And if the first two pages made you feel like this would actually lead to Yoru cutting Denji's dick off, well, by the second panel on the third page, it's very clear from the shot of Yoru's face that she, is she turned on? Honestly, as an Asa Din fanatic that owns Din Din and Asa plushies because I'm that stupid, you'd think I'd be happy about this, but there, ah, there's just something a little bit off about this entire interaction. Yoru demands he get it out, but Dinji asks seriously if she's serious, seriously. Yoru's face says it all. She's, she's tired of the stalling. So as Yoru stares at Dinji waiting for his dick to be revealed to a centuries old war goddess, devil thingy, Yoru gives Denji this look, but Denji, realizing she's serious, probably is thinking right now about how he's regretting this entire scenario. I mean, I would be too. Cutting off your dick, th that's just, I, I don't know. I feel like that's a last resort kind of thing, right? Could be wrong though. Never been in a situation where I had to cut off my dick. But Denji starts to panic upon further realizing the gravity of the situation. So Yoru loses her patience and Denji tries very hard to stop Yoru after changing his mind, but he is after all successful in disarming Yoru, but Yoru quickly recovers by grabbing onto Denji's junk. Yoru quickly realizes what has just happened, which is funny because isn't this exactly what she wanted to do? Kind of like she cl clearly she wasn't prepared for any of this and didn't expect it to get this far but probably went along with it because she's yoru i i don't know i don't know what's going through her head right here but denji's reaction on the other hand is wild this man is probably between two thoughts right now like holy shit a woman is touching my bare dick and also quickly and most importantly followed by oh no yoru was touching my dick so she continues saying that she cares nothing for his foolishness and only cares about fighting Chainsaw Man for real and proceeds to ask Denji, ah, what if I crush your balls? Will that get you in the mood? Hmm. Okay, fair play. Yoru is clearly trying to motivate Denji by crushing his balls, but Yoru seeing Denji's contorted face remembers when she kissed Denji way back in Chainsaw Man chapter or whatever the fuck and surprise simply says they've kissed and the mood. Oh my God, the mood shift. Oh, Yoru's eyes 
they they go, uh, well, it's quite interesting where they go. And poor Digi, as confused and horrified as he probably is, and probably doesn't even know what he's really feeling, the two share a very one-sided steamy kiss. The kiss, though, is interrupted, and I will let you all assume what interrupted it, and the two stare blankly at one another. I mean, it's over at this point. We know what happens when autopilot takes over, right? The two then go back to kissing, and Yoru gets extra with it. I mean, she's going at it, sucking, licking, even chewing on his lower lip, which is when Asa... By the way, how did she learn how to do that? Asa finally regains control over her body, and Dinji gets what he wanted from the start. A happy ending, though I doubt ideal. We'll see the real damage done in the next chapter. Oh. But, oh, God, oh my God. Asa is trying her absolute best to help Dinji, and Yoru sorta just hijacks the situation, threatens to cut his dick off, which, you know, she almost did, and then forces herself upon him, doing God knows what with his junk. It's just, it's just a little much, no? It feels so unfair to Denji, who constantly is having these precious experiences taken away from women who constantly force themselves upon them for their own desires or gain. Yoru didn't need to do any of that, but in the moment she was overtaken by lust for Chainsaw Man and crossed a distinct, very easy to see line you do not cross. It's also pretty interesting when you consider something I've always been told by a good friend of mine. Twitch influencer, personality, and the mega simp, the lightning eagle. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. Now, not saying she exactly hates Chainsaw Man, but she doesn't like him, and she clearly isn't indifferent to him in the slightest. And also, when you consider the fact that Yoru wants to beat Chainsaw Man, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's it's very clear very quickly that she admires Chainsaw Man and her obsession to defeat him is very much wrapped up in a complex web of lust, desire, love, and obsession that hate is not a part of. No, because Yoru is in fact in love with the Chainsaw Man. Aww. Or something. When you also consider the last couple of pages of the chapter as well, I think it's clear that what is happening to Yoru and Asa is what is happening to Denji and Pochita, or maybe already has. The two are interlocked. They are the same people, or at the very least becoming the same person. I think we need to stop thinking maybe in the future of Asa and Yoru as two separate people, but two people becoming the same thing, which is technically Asa, but also Yoru. Because ask yourself why Yoru would be doing stuff a teenager in high school would be doing. Something you know, you would think Asa would do, right? And why is Asa suddenly the badass that's taking on people 1v1 on high rise, breaking Denji out of prison, being so supportive of him in every way she possibly could? Asa, in the beginning of Chainsaw Man Part 2, you couldn't say that about her. She wouldn't do it. She literally states early in Part 2, this is how naive she used to think, by the way, that she thinks boys are simplistic and don't care for what women look like. All she has to do is simply show up and they'll go after her because she is a woman. And that's a very immature and demeaning take on herself and men in such a way that I couldn't ever see her saying that about herself or about men anymore where we currently are in the story. Not unless she had reason to, so like, what is happening here? Well, you know, I, I think they're turning into one person, like how Denji already became one with Pochita, and I think this will make Asa stronger and complete a big part of her character arc. The missing thing that I feel like she's always needed to make her, as Bucky say, make her come out of her shell, one, they're on the same page and accept each other and themselves for what they truly want, which is, as one example, is Denji and Chainsaw Man, then finally we will see Asa not as a girl failure any longer, but a true badass who cannot not only stand at odds with Chainsaw Man, but also alongside him as an equal. See, I, I think what Yoru wants out of Chainsaw Man isn't to just beat him literally, but to beat him in the sense to conquer him as a man, as evident by the whole ball crushing thing. She wants to dominate him in the battlegrounds of love. <sighs> and, and whether or not Asa will continue to deny what happened here and continue the cycle, we'll just have to see. Also on top of that, what will Denji's reaction be? Obviously, he enjoyed this to a certain degree, but this was absolutely unfair to him, and he would notice that immediately. This has to affect him in the same exact ways, honestly, you'd think that everything else has. However, I think something good has to come from this, eventually. Something that allows them both to break through, not just in terms of their own relationships, but as well, themselves to some degree, no? I don't know. I just feel like this time, it's different. 
Also, I'm gonna add a last minute addition to this video just because I thought it was so cool. And of course I wanna mention this Twitter thread I read from at Kigo. So all credits go to him and his link will be in the, the pinned comment below for the thread. And the reason I wanna mention this is because I, I think it's really getting into the future of Denji's character in a way I've never seen someone mention before. So I want to spotlight it and add my own reactions to it. I probably am about to add like 10 minutes onto this video, but hey, you waited a week to see it. So I hope it pays off. Now we're proud to present our newest edition, a program about love, honor, sacrifice, revenge, and a whole lot of destruction. Unfortunately, the Doom posting came to fruition as it's just as bad as predicted. Things will never be the same after this. Now, ever since Dingy turned back into Chainsaw Man just before he and Naruto were captured, I always felt this significantly changed the tone of Chainsaw Man Part 2. Before, I'd say it had, I don't know, a more relaxed atmosphere than Part 1, but felt largely similar. However, it truly felt in that moment something about Dingy broke, and that was directly a knowledge in the previous chapter by Dingy. Which in hindsight, you could see that chapter as a massive revelation for just Dingy for himself, in terms of how far gone everything is, including himself. Dingy and Asa both now have a traumatic experience that will likely ruin any chance of a real relationship between the two, romantic or otherwise. This is something Fujimoto likes to do from time to time, which, to put it in a simple phrase is curl the monkey's paw. We all want Dingy and Asa to be happy, and it doesn't matter together or not when it comes down to brass tacks. But Asa Din very much is a real thing in this story at this point, and the fact that this chapter we saw by far one of the worst examples of sexual assault perpetrated on Dingy in this series thus far by supposedly one half of our heroine of the series, it doesn't bode well for Dingy. It also fits in with the theming of Chainsaw Man, which is to say, depressing and unfair. Plus, you gotta think about this realistically too, which, despite the setting of Chainsaw Man, Fujimoto portrays characters realistically with all of their flaws included. Nine out of 10 people, if this were to happen to them, wouldn't approve of this, they wouldn't want this, and they'd be dramatically scarred. It would ruin any chance you'd have with that person because you're not going to go out with someone who assaulted you, right? I knew I wouldn't, and that's why this relationship likely won't come to fruition, or at least not in the happily ever kind of way. Which, if that is the case, as much as I want them both to be happy, a relationship is not needed to attain happiness in the real world, despite what online grifters may tell you. And you can be perfectly happy doing and being anything you want alone! Especially because I think this is leading somewhere interesting too, more interesting than just getting the girl and happily ever after. From Asa's perspective, Dingy essentially confirms this interaction. She has no agency and because of that is a victim to his urge. Asa will likely close herself off from Dingy, and this sparks whether she will still save him or choose to weaponize him for death. If they're right, Asa couldn't ever view Dingy as someone worthy of being in a relationship with because of her own troubles and issues. Her agency is essentially all but gone at this point, as Yoru clearly showed she is not in control. She's becoming one with Yoru. So how can one feel comfortable in their own shoes when their agency has been robbed of them by a devil, quite literally on their shoulder? Well, if you put yourself in Asa's shoes, you'd likely come to the logical conclusion that the only way forward is to close yourself off from that person to not hurt them again. Because trauma is hard to deal with, and as we know, Asa is more autistic than Asbengold, and she fumbles over basically everything, which we, which we joke about, but it's a sign that she's in way too deep and over her head. This then brings back up the question to weaponize or save him, and while I think the answer is to save him, I also don't think it's quite clear yet that weaponizing Denji is as bad as it may seem. From Denji's perspective, the one girl that was meant to be different brings about the same type of trauma. Asa has so far been the exception to all of his past experiences, and I think this is Denji's last straw. It's interesting, isn't it? The girl who was supposed to be the one, the good one, has also let the same thing happen to Dingy that she is trying to protect him from. Now, I don't think this means Asa is to blame because she isn't to blame. She didn't assault Dingy, right? But the issue comes in, could Asa articulate something like that to Dingy in, in her state or his state? Can Dingy and his even begin to understand without time, which they don't have on their sides, that this isn't what it seems and she's on his side? I mean, Denji already doesn't trust Asa or Yoru as is. So is it Denji's last straw? Yes. 
It has to be. Not saying this won't happen again. It very well could and it very well couldn't, but this could be the last time we'll likely see Denji fall for these same tricks willingly ever again. It's over. There has been too much trust broken from every woman in his life. There has been only one that has proven trust, and that is Nayuta. And we'll have to see where Asa stands with the next chapters for sure, but it's 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 over. It's, we're done. This chapter unfortunately fits perfectly into our narrative so far. Unfulfilled payoffs and cliffhangers culminating in the worst way possible. I haven't watched Evangelion, so I'll let someone else speak to this, but getting what you wanted in the worst way possible is Chainsaw Man. And that's something I didn't mention in the video because I, I thought I'd better, you know, mention it here. But the now infamous hospital scene in Hideaki Anno's insanely influential 1997 film, The End of Evangelion, shows that while one of the Ava pilots and one of Shinji's closest friends, Asuka Langley Soryu, is, a, is in comatose from her last fight in Neon Genesis Evangelion. So in a fit concocted by depression, abandonment, trauma, loneliness, and many other issues, when seeing Asuka's exposed breasts masturbates to her. This scene is one of Hideaki Anno's most spectacular achievements as a director and writer as he perfectly conveys the low lows someone like Shinji can reach as a human, how helpless people are to their deepest desires when they have been suffocated and denied them time and time again. And as well, the realization that we as people cannot run from what we are as human beings, which is to say, humans, flaws and all. The correlation between this scene and this chapter, as you can guess, is quite on the nose and even replicates one-to-one -one the final image of the scene in The End of Evangelion, except this time Denji is the victim and Asa, for simplicity, will say the perpetrator. Viewing it through this context shows that Asa, if anything, is more comparable to someone like Shinji Ikari from Evangelion, which if you compare them side by side, the comparisons become obvious very quickly. For one, both have memorable moments laying in bed, wasting away, engaging in mindless entertainment which masks the pain they feel. Shinji, his music, Asa, her TV. Both have been abandoned by their parents. Shinji's father neglects him for his own selfish desires, his mother now killed and turned into a mech that he himself pilots, and is well cloned into Rei Ayanami to use his dummy plug for these Ava mechs. Asa's parents, well, they aren't around at all, she's abandoned, as well, most of these characters feel the need to save someone or humanity at all costs, yet struggle with the weight of such a decision. Shinji feels guilty for piloting a mech and is crushed under the pressure and weight of having to save the entire human race from biblical angels feeling as if he has no agency over even his own life. Asa, on the other hand, wants to save Denji with all of her heart, but is constantly faced with roadblock after roadblock, and just when she found him again, her agency was taken from her. Honestly, I, I could go on forever with the comparisons between Chainsaw Man and Evangelion. So if you want that, drop a like. I mean, we'll say, I don't know, like if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll do it. Denji within this has lost his final connection to humanity. The dogs, his house, his friends, his sister, and now the fabled girl who was the exception to the trauma. I see this as Denji's death sentence and will be his final straw to embrace Chainsaw Man in its entirety. I think is, you know, I, I think this is the path for Denji at the moment. I would argue he needs to reach this low low in order to ever recover as well, but all of this trauma before this chapter was at a blowing point and, well, it exploded in the form of his dick. In other words, Denji is now set on his path to becoming Chainsaw Man because he can't turn to anybody else but himself now. He needs to go down this path to further this character, which is where the interesting stuff starts. Denji does not have the wherewithal to deal with these emotions, but he knows exactly how to be Chainsaw Man. Unfortunately, this feels like the exact thing Fami was waiting for. Denji's rejection of humanity and acceptance of becoming a weapon. Fami has been playing the long game for Chainsaw Man for quite some time. Almost everything has fallen into place, and Asa, not truly understanding what Fami really wants from Denji or Chainsaw Man, has in a way further played into her plans. For Fami, this is all according to plan, and who else is better to help him down this path than her sister Yoru and also Makima, and also technically Nayata too. Asa and Yoru now have an excuse to turn Denji into a weapon, and this is where I see the end of Denji coming from later in the story. He will serve as a weapon of war and will ultimately pay the price for this. Saving Denji will not save him. Now, remember that random image, I'm sure I brought this up before, of Asa holding a chainsaw with a very square looking butt? Exactly, that's the one I'm talking about. Square butts, there are, you know, they are just so superior. Some of the best things you can have, I mean, I. 
I love my square butt. So getting to the point, this is how Asa will come to use Denji as a weapon. She may come to realize that saving Denji isn't saving him. I sort of though have a more optimistic viewpoint, but not because I'm being an optimist, but because I think like in the square butt image, very nice, it's already been set up that this is what Denji's purpose will, will ultimately be, a tool for Asa to use to save the world from the devils. And now, however, I don't think this means Denji will die, most likely because I just, I, why would they do that? There is still more to Denji's character, but, but not much. We're sort of in the home stretch of his character arc, and I think the final step is becoming the weapon. I imagine he could very well still turn back into his normal form afterwards too. After all, he can regenerate and stuff, right? Also, if this happens and they actually do kill him, or I mean, just even go through with this, holy shit, people are gonna be mad about this. The Asa, Mitaka, and Yoru hate is already insufferable. Now imagine if a female character were to essentially use the main male lead as a weapon? <laughs> yep. All of the crazies would come out in full force saying Asa is a Mary Sue and that she's woke and yada, yada, yada. Don't worry. I'll be there for it. I'll be making those videos debucking them point by point and oh, oh, I cannot wait. Our only small piece of happiness is that Nayuta is alive, but no one in the story will acknowledge this until it is much too late. Her block on the memory still being around shows she's here, but who knows where. I think whatever state Nayata is currently in is probably most important. What does her situation look like? And I have a pretty bad feeling about it. I mean, I don't think for a second Nayata is okie dokie, but I think she's in a similar or worse state to what Denji probably was, maybe being brainwashed like Mason and Vorkuta. What do numbers mean, Nayata? Victor Reznov died in the escape. Unfortunately, this is one of the most important Chainsaw Man chapters, and it has served its purpose in a cruelly effective manner. Things will never be the same, and that is the real prophecy. The world forsakes the Lord, so he'll forsake the world. It's a pretty good quote to throw in at the end, but it's true. Denji has been wronged one too many times, and now you've turned a boy into a man in one of the cruelest ways possible. Denji, as far as everyone else should be concerned, will never be the Denji we knew. The one that saved power from the worm and the bat devil, the one who tried to run away with Rize, the one who knew what was right by slaying Makima, he's gone now, and we're never getting back to that. So pray. Pray that Nayata is alright. Pray that Asa and Denji can work through to overcome, and pray that everything will be alright in the end. Because there isn't much left to pray about in Chainsaw Man. Either way, this chapter is absolutely one of the best in the entire series, and, and is going to have huge consequences for the future of Asa, Yoru, and Digi's character in ways I'm not sure any of us will probably expect. Sorry for being late on this video, everyone. I had some serious medical issues I needed to take care of. I'm still recovering, so please go easy on me in the comments. This video isn't edited really that well because, you know, I have to catch up and also do tons of videos this week to, you know, be on time. <sighs> My weekly devil is dead though, hopefully for good. That son of a bitch stole my last good bottle of cocoa butter lotion. Oh wait, the video for 168 is out right now, so go watch it. Bye bye